So Jimmy Doe, who is a comedian, I guess, but has the show, has, uh, what, 653,000 subscribers, is quite is a real lefty. And he does stuff in a studio, but he also does stuff in a stand-up club. And I'm going to show you this. Now, there's a lot of what he calls humor here, um, which I've told you before, I find it difficult to, you know, criticize or deal with some of the humor, but we'll go through it. But basically, the whole skit, the whole thing, is on Amazon. And one of the themes, both with, Kos, both with my show and Tucker Carlson and with Kyle Kalinske, is how much these people lie, how much they deceive us, and with what certainty and confidence they do it, how ignorant and stupid their arguments are. And that's a theme. It's a theme on my critique of these videos. And we're going to continue that with Jimmy Dore, with, uh, and we're going to switch. There we go. Jimmy Dore, the Jimmy Dore Show. Um, talking about Amazon opening grocery stores and why, God, why, it's bad. So here goes Jimmy Dore. Amazon's back in the news, but I just want to give you a little refresher. I know, right? Give you a little refresher. This is from 2016, this article. It says, report Amazon. Now, before we even get to this article, I just want you to notice, he says from this article. Article means, you know, like in a newspaper, like, like some supposedly objective source of information some place that where people or, or, or some institute that studied this and reported something an article but if you look here it's clearly disclosed so you can say he's not really lying but it's from the institute for local self-reliance okay if you go look up the institute for local self-reliance it's a lefty think tank propaganda group that is focused on growing everything local, buying everything local, being everything local. They're anti-development. They're anti-technology. They're an I mean, a bunch of Luddites who, yeah, they, they, surprise, shocking, they hate Amazon. So, yes, let's analyze Amazon and start with an objective source of information. And all his data, all his information is coming from the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. And you should look them up and see how corrupt that is. Now, if he'd use multiple sources, if he'd look at a number of different statistics, okay, then you could use them. But when you choose right from the beginning and without telling your audience, a clearly, obviously, unequivocally biased, even Marxist organization, then come on. But nobody cares. Nobody cares. All right, here we go. Somebody says Jimmy's awesome. Jimmy's great. No, Jimmy says it is awful. He's horrible. He's terrible. And you shouldn't endorse him in any way because he's destroying this country. Because people buy into this crap. Stranglehold, how the company's tightening grip on the economy is stifling competition, eroding jobs, and threatening community. So Amazon has a tightening grip on the economy. Oh my God, it's strangling it. It's destroying the U.S. economy. It's stifling competition. There's no competition to Amazon. It's unbelievable how uncompetitive retail is today. And, and jobs, massive losses of jobs. We'll get to that in a minute. And of course, it's threatening communities. I mean, actually, now that I think of it, Tucker Carlson would, should join the Institute for Local Self-Reliance because I think Tucker Carlson would agree with all these points. I mean, I could do a show tomorrow about Tucker Carlson's hatred of Amazon, and he'd list exactly the same things. Left and right. What's the difference anymore? It sounds bad, but on the other hand, you know, I can get a Chinese dildo in under two hours. You know what I mean? The humor. <laughs> but of course, there's a real truth there. Convenience. You can get stuff. I mean, his preference is maybe to buy a dildo. But I live in Puerto Rico. I get food. I get all kinds of stuff. Convenience. But let's laugh at that. Let's make fun of that. that that's just, you know, convenience is stupid. Convenience is ridiculous. Who wants convenience? I, I'm not willing to pay a price for convenience. By the way, I wonder how much, how much Jimmy Dore spends a year on Amazon. What percentage of his shopping does he do on Amazon? <laughs> My guess is a lot. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's my kind of dim sum, you know what I'm saying? 
I figured out a long time ago, it's, a, it's, it's really fascinating, that the way to get a laugh on people is to talk about sex in these kind of ways. It's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lenny Bruce started this by saying the F word. You always get a laugh when you say the F word, right? Always. And um, it's, 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 it's fascinating. It says something about the psychology of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, did you know that half of all U.S. households are subscribed to the membership program of Amazon Prime? Isn't that amazing? You know what Amazon Prime does for you? You pay one set fee a year, under $100. You get free shipping, two days. It gets to you in two days. And, on top of that, you have a subscription to Amazon Music. Access at the marginal cost of $0 to every piece of music ever. And on top of that, and on top of that, you have Prime Video. I mean, some great shows on Prime Video, some good movies on Prime Video. What's the marginal cost of watching Prime? Zero. My only question is, why don't all U.S. households have membership to Amazon Prime? What is wrong with the other 50%? I mean, something's wrong. It's terrible. Right? Now, no, well, it doesn't take 10 days to ship if you don't have Prime. If you don't have Prime and you want free shipping, it, ta it takes 10 days, but you can pay for one day shipping, two day shipping, three day shipping. And, and, and indeed, if Prime is not good enough for you, you can pay for next day delivery. And in some places around the country, you can get same day delivery. I mean, that is stunning. Stunning. I mean, Bezos and Amazon have dramatically improved our lives. And the testament to that is in people's actions. I mean, we should celebrate that half of U.S. households are subscribed. We should ask, wow, what an achievement. What did Amazon do to deserve that? Isn't that amazing that half of our Now, let me just say, I don't believe that number just because I don't believe any of its numbers because the numbers I've researched are all wrong. As far as I know, 91 million, the 91 million Amazon Prime accounts in the United States. Is that translating to half of U.S. household? I don't know. But even if it does, I mean, it doesn't matter. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah, half of all online shopping searches start directly at Amazon. So half of the searches start directly on Amazon. By the way, the other half, again, number is wrong. It's less than half. It's somewhere in the 40%. But more importantly is this. Nobody actually knows because neither Amazon nor Google actually released these numbers. So these are best estimates of different research firms. But nobody actually knows how many searches. But note that even when you search on Google for something, the next search you do for that same thing is on Amazon. So even though you might search on Google, you're probably going to buy it on Amazon. Why is that a bad thing? Ah, because we're told. Amazon captures nearly one in every $2 that America spends online. Again, not true. Uh, many of the dollars that Amazon sells, the captures go to retailers who sell through Amazon. The actual number of how many dollars go through Amazon is in dispute. The highest figure I've seen is 46%, not one in every two. And it, but even that is challenged. It's more like somewhere in the 30s. So it's not 50% of all online sales on Amazon or, or Amazon benefits from. And then there's a question of over 50%, over 50% of all the sales on Amazon are actually sells by other retailers using Amazon's platform to sell. So Amazon is keeping in business, providing a high-tech amazing solution, delivery, technology, infrastructure, logistics, to tens if not hundreds of thousands of other businesses. It truly is amazing how beneficial Amazon, the Amazon platform is to other businesses who don't have to try to build that from scratch or try to use other platforms. And many places sell on Amazon and also sell on, on places like eBay. Why? It's kind of why. Um, Amazon increasingly controls the underlying infrastructure of our economy. The underlying infrastructure of the economy. Now, what does that mean? I mean, 
the underlying infrastructure of economy. I thought the underlying infrastructure in economy is like the Fed, which, which is everywhere, right? Money, money is an underlying infrastructure. What's the underlying infrastructure of our economy? Is it roads? Does Amazon control those? Or is it warehouses? But warehouses aren't the underlying, I, it, it, you know? But it sounds ominous. Ooh, this private corporation controls the underlying infrastructure of our economy. Very, very scary. But don't explain what it means because it doesn't really mean anything. Amazon's increasing dominance comes with high costs. It's eroding opportunity and fueling inequality, and it's concentrating power in ways that endanger competition, community life, and democracy. Oh my God, Amazon is threatening democracy and the American way of life. Really, it's eroding opportunity. It's increasing opportunity dramatically. Think of all the people employed by Amazon. We'll get to that in a minute. But think of all the stores that sell through Amazon. Think of all the new businesses that we created to serve Amazon. Think of all the construction that Amazon is responsible for. I mean, no, it's created massive amounts of opportunity all over the world. Think of all the savings you have because of Amazon. All those shipping costs you don't have to pay because you are on Prime. And then think of all the money you save because you shop on Amazon and therefore could do other stuff that increased your opportunities. And is it fueling inequality? By making things cheaper for all of us, is it fueling inequality? Or is it actually reducing inequality of consumption, of standard of living, which is shrinking constantly, shrinking constantly. And it's concentrating power in ways that endanger competition, maybe, maybe it endangers competition, community life and democracy. I have a hard time seeing the company as anything less than a new wave of economic dislocation. It's economic dislocation, that's true. It's, it's like the automobiles dislocating the buggies. It's like the computer, not the computer, but Microsoft Word dislocating the typewriters. Yeah, it's called, drum roll, I need the special effect of a drum roll. It's called progress. It's called progress. And progress, progress always leads to dislocation. That's a reality. And you can think about how do you deal with that, but that's a reality. And on par with the earlier collapse of manufacturing. Manufacturing today is higher than it's ever been in the United States. It just is doing it with less people. Again, technology dislocates people because technology replaces people. So, yeah. Manufacturing is being dislocated, but we manufacture more stuff than ever. And yeah, small businesses are being devastated. You remember the days when we used to complain about Walmart? Oh, all the time. Communities used to get together. We don't want a Walmart here. They'll dislocate us. They'll destroy small businesses. They, they hate Starbucks. Anybody who comes in and who competes, that's the point, right? Anybody who actually competes with your local monopoly businesses on Main Street is a dislocator and is devastates. And small businesses that devastated so many regions of the country. The, by, for instance, what kind of, so you know what they. By the way, that quote was not for some again. That was from the director of that institute. So again, a, an advocate, an ideologue, which is fine. But just let us know that rather than just. So Amazon can actually operate at a loss, which is how they, they put borders out of business, right? So they sold books at a loss for a while until they put borders out of business. And well, they can't operate at a loss all the time because nobody would fund them if they did. They do operate at the loss much of the time. By the way, it's funny because these same leftists then argue that Amazon doesn't pay any taxes. Well, yeah, it doesn't pay any taxes because it operates at a loss. And it operates at the loss at whose benefit? Our benefit as consumers. They did the same thing with Zappos shoes. They did the same thing with that diaper service. They do it with that. Do you guys like Zappos shoes? I mean, it's amazing, Zappos shoes. I mean, you could buy 20 shoes. You can, they, they'll mail them to your home. You try them on. And Zappos was a, a business that 
that, that Amazon bought. It was a startup by somebody else. And you try them on and you send back the ones you don't like, including all of them. And it's free shipping. The whole thing is free shipping. I mean, it's amazing. Isn't that cool? But instead of saying, wow, it's amazing, no. Oh, they're doing it a lot, so something bad is happening. They can, how can you compete with a company that doesn't have to make a profit? You fucking can't do it, but Bezos has figured out this way. Well, why can't you do what Bezos does? Bezos is not a magician. To do it, to operate at a loss. For instance, here's some of the good jobs they get rid of. UPS and the Postal Service. <laughs> These are the good jobs, yes. Postal Service jobs. I mean, I wish we could get rid of all Postal Service jobs. But really, this is the issue? That Amazon is... is now, first... Without Amazon, the postal office, postal office would be completely bust. Amazon keeps postal service afloat. It keeps the postal service afloat. I've looked into this because everybody always says the government is subsidizing Amazon through the postal service. If that were the case, why is Amazon building its alternative delivery service? Because, no, the post office doesn't subsidize Amazon. Amazon keeps the post office afloat. So all those post office workers should kiss Jeff Bezos' boots because he has preserved their jobs. And the same for UPS. UPS, over the last 10 years, or something like that, has hired 100,000 people. Why? To service Amazon. And now... Amazon figures they can deliver it even cheaper than UPS and Postal Service. By the way, do you see what happened to FedEx when Amazon st stopped using them? They got crushed. So, <laughs> you can't compete. You wanted competition. Didn't he say you wanted competition? Well, one of the features of competition, because he was complaining not enough competition, well, you know, you basically had UPS and the post office and FedEx, the three delivery services. That's very little competition. I don't really think that, but according to these leftists, that would be very little competition. So why not, instead of that, have four competitors? And the fourth competitor would be Amazon. Now, you'd think that Elizabeth Warren and and Jimmy Dore and these leftists would celebrate that. More competition is good, they tell us. No, 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 no. Because it's Amazon. Because they're successful. They want competition, but they want loser competition. They want competition that doesn't actually win. They want competition where you don't really add any value. They want competition where nobody loses. No, no, no. Everybody's a winner. Everybody gets a ribbon. This is like the, 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 the self-esteem movement. Everybody gets a ribbon. Nobody's better than anybody else. God forbid. They want egalitarian competition. Or they want what economists call, wrongly, stupidly, unscientifically, perfect competition. But that doesn't exist. And that would be horrific if it did. So yeah, UPS and postal service employees are going to lose their jobs if Amazon enters the delivery. And you know, one day, drones are going to deliver all these packages. By the way, I think I got a drone for Christmas. That, that's going to be cool. Maybe I can do a show about... Anyway, it's going to be cool to play with the drone. Um, anyway, craziness. Must now compete with Amazon, yeah. which is developing well, alternative delivery methods. The company's low-wage, precarious labor model threatens the jobs of... Low-wage. Amazon raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour, just like Tucker Carlson wanted them to. They said, yes, sir, Tucker Carlson. Yes, so leftists, we're going to raise our minimum wage at Amazon to $15 an hour. So it's not precarious labor model. It's not low wages. It's the wages you guys have demanded. Now, they cut people's bonuses. They got rid of stock participation plans because you can't have both. Duh. But, well, I haven't got my drone yet. I'll find out next week if I have the drone. But I think I got the drone. Million unionized middle income workers at UPS and the US Postal Service. Those are middle income jobs? Well, good for them. Then the Amazon jobs to compete, they'll have to get people like that and they'll have to but maybe they'll be able to do it better. All right. 
By the, oh, by the way, here it is, uh, Los Angeles Times. Amazon will open three more. So it shuts down your store and gets rid of comp now. Oh, now we're going to be a bookstore. There they are. They're opening brick and mortar bookstores, right? And by the way, this is. Have you ever been to one of the brick and mortar bookstores that Amazon has? They're very different than other brick and mortar bookstores, and they're not many of them. They're just a few, but they're they're unique experiences. It's a completely different model. To say they shut down borders and they're opening their own. I mean, there's truth to that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Borders, by the way. Oh, borders. Did, did you ever, ever see uh, You've Got Email? You've Got Mail? You've Got Mail, I think it was called, where the evil big bookstore was expanding and going to destroy the little local bookstores. I mean, where does this end? I guess with local little stores everywhere, local little farmers. I guess when we return to subsistence farming, then they'll be happy. Then there'll be perfect competition. But yeah, there used to be lots of little bookstores. Then came Borders and Barnes and & Noble and competed away because they were more efficient and they created that. Now comes Amazon and competes Borders away and we complain because Borders were so wonderful. No, you guys thought Borders was a disaster. By the way, from 2016, net loss of jobs since Amazon's opened. Um, doesn't say doesn't say, oh, the source, Institute for Local Self-Reliance Analysis. I, I did my own research, and I looked, and, and just July 29, 2017, so he could have found this article in the Financial Times of London. The headline is, Amazon is creating more jobs than it destroys. So, you know, I don't know what the number is. I mean, there's no question in my mind. Absolutely no question that Amazon creates more jobs than it destroys. It's just the logic of it. But it's an empirical question. But it's so dishonest, again, to just present the, the one piece of data that confirms your biases. And not giving any of the logic. How did this happen? Yes, people have lost jobs in retail. But what about all the other jobs? Not just, now notice, this is full-time, part-time, and Tempe employees on Amazon payroll. But what about all the jobs that Amazon created in companies that service Amazon, in companies that sell on Amazon, in companies that are subcontractors to Amazon, in companies that make the chips for Amazon products, and on and on and on and on you can go. That's the real analysis. Not payroll to payroll, but you got to look at the entire universe of jobs that were lost. And in that, if you do that, it's no contest. The number of jobs, the Financial Times is absolutely right. Amazon creates massive numbers of jobs, more than it so-called destroys through what's called creative destruction. 148,000 net loss. That's of 2015. That's four years later. It's got to be way more than that. So they're not creating jobs. They're creating shit jobs and getting rid of good jobs. And there's even less shit jobs than there were the good jobs. None of that is true. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And nobody's going to challenge him. Nobody challenges these things. Anyway. And the company has gotten at least $613 million in tax subsidies since 2005 to five. Now, what are those tax subsidies? People always say this, but what are the tax subsidies? Tax subsidies. Is that because they didn't pay taxes when they were losing money? Is that because they can deduct capital expenditures off of their taxes like everybody else can? What are these tax subsidies people talk about? I've never seen them. I've never seen anybody actually list them. By the way, the Huffington Post, he's just, he's just reading to you from the same story from the same institute that the Huffington Post is citing. There's no research here. There's no commitment to truth. This goes back to what I said about government. Zero, zilch, nada, commitment to any kind of truth. To actually finding out what is really going on in the world. They don't care. I mean, as you saw with Tucker Carlson, nobody actually cares this to us isn't that something yeah so the and by the way then they bought whole foods right 
And this is what they said at the time. They bought Whole Foods, was it last year or two years ago? And this is what they said at the time. The grocery stocks are down on Friday, but they shouldn't be the only companies trembling. Google, Apple, and even Uber are threatened by Amazon's growing hold over e-commerce, media, and same-day home delivery. In short, Jeff Bezos wants to take over the world, and this is a very significant step in that direction. That's from Slate Magazine, another objective source of information and commentary. But no that, <laughs> I mean, I can think of a worse thing than Jeff Bezos taking over the world, given the alternatives that we have today. But to them, any successful businessman wants to take over the world. They say the same thing about Google. They say the same thing about Apple. They say the same thing about all these people. And yet, all these people are competing with one another. Does he really feel bad about... Okay, so these you see the world we're living in, right? Okay, this is happening. And uh, here's, he's now going to open grocery stores. They got a new one. Here it comes. This is Amazon new. is betting big once again. The tech giant just announced they're opening up their first physical grocery store. And it's right here in SoCal. The market will open up in Woodland Hills next year. The store will be branded differently than Whole Foods, which Amazon bought for over $13 billion two years ago. It's a yeah, they don't plan on competing with Whole Foods, you know, because organized duopolies give people a delusion there's a choice. Yeah, but of course, what he's ignoring is the fact that Whole Foods is, sells very expensive food, sells to the elites, sells to the wealthy, sells to people who can afford it, sells to the frou-frou organic crowd. And what, what uh, uh, Jeff Bezos is doing is opening a regular grocery store where normal people, normal people, well, normal people, but people with lesser means shop and providing probably a phenomenal experience It'll probably be amazing. There'll probably be very, very efficient and very creative uh, home delivery options. Uh, you'll be able to buy the groceries online in advance and pick them up at the store or have them delivered straight to your home. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be amazingly innovative. And of course, instead of being excited about that possibility, which is what any normal positive human being should be, you know, he is, of course... This is scary. Amazon is going to open a grocery store next to you. By the way, do you know how much Amazon sells of all retail sales in the United States? What's Amazon's percentage of all retail sales in the United States on its platform? Like 4%. Between 4 to 5% is the numbers I've seen. Because only 10%, only 10% of all retail sales are online. Now, 10% is still a big number. And enough, a big enough number to destroy a lot of brick and mortar retail chains. But only 10% of retail sales today are online. Now, I don't understand that because in my household, it's like 90%. So we're talking about Amazon is not just competing with Google, not just competing with, uh, by the way, I didn't buy my drone on Amazon because I, I, there's, a, there's a store in New York where I can buy the drone. Um, the same price as Amazon, they get free shipping and no sales taxes. So I buy there whenever I can. It's called BH, B and H, audio, video, stuff like that. So that's where I get my stuff, um, the electronic stuff. I don't get it on Amazon because it's actually cheaper at B and H when you take out the taxes. I mean, I'm on a campaign in my life to pay as little taxes as possible. Haven't you noticed? That includes sales taxes, income taxes, corporate taxes, dividend taxes, capital gains taxes. I want to, without violating the law, pay as little taxes as possible. I know people like him think I'm a parasite, but opposite is true. Uh, by the way, no more super chat questions, please, because I, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna have time. Let's see. Maybe we'll stop the Jimmy Dore thing here soon, but let's let's listen a little bit more. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to you. Now here's Bob with the sports. Expected to be more mainstream, while Whole Foods will remain more high-end. Job openings at this market were recently posted online. That can be. He doesn't create any jobs. No, no, nobody works for Amazon. Yeah, so, gee, Jeff Bezos, now he runs, uh, he runs the food. He's got to have everything, all the food. All the food. How many grocery stores are there in the United States? What percentage of groceries will Jeff Bezos have even after he opens up the grocery stores? Like 1%, half a percent, one-tenth of 1%? Yeah, but, but scare people. 
scaring fear, as we've talked about, fear is very powerful. He's gonna, he runs distribution of everything. He runs. He distributes a lot. Of course, it used to be Walmart who distributed a lot. Everybody was afraid of Walmart. Everybody was scared of Walmart. But Walmart, and, and there was nobody who was going to compete with Walmart. That's the other thing that, you know, you'd think people would think about what they've said in the past. If in the past you called Walmart a monopoly, if in the past you said they control everything, if in the past you said they deliver everything, they control the infrastructure of the economy, then shouldn't it be embarrassing that 10, 20 years later when another company is beating Walmart, you say the same thing about that company without imagining a scenario where a third company in 20 years will be beating Amazon? No, that would require them to do something they don't want to do, that pundits generally, left and right, never actually do. That requires them to actually think. Think. People don't want to think. Online commerce, and he owns the newspaper. He does. He owns a newspaper. One newspaper to do to figure out a way to control our water supply and he could become fucking emperor that's all he needs he has. this is what's that he already has cloud computing which is used yeah. for everything okay so I have so he controls cloud computing i don't know what his market chain cloud computing is but cloud computing is fantastic and he saw it before anybody else how, how many of you back up your computer anymore i don't because i have it backed up in icloud and in dropbox and in one drive on Microsoft, I have so many backups, I don't even know which backup to consider. But it's all in the cloud. Everything's in the cloud. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And it makes Netflix possible. It makes all this stuff possible. And instead of praising Bezos for that, no, no, no. Now he controls that one more part of it. All right, I'm going to skip a little ahead here because he just makes jokes about the cloud. Audience. <laughs> Audience it's a little smart, right? That's that's his problem. <laughs> See, the beauty of doing so, the beauty of doing this show. For years, I was just a regular stand-up comic, and I would get heckled like, "Fuck you, your dick, you suck." <laughs> and now I get actually, Jimmy, the cloud computing. <laughs> Point of order, Jim, but because of cloud computing. Uh, I just could have melted. It's a different kind of heckle. So here's what, and then Dil, here's what Dylan Radigan has to say about it. The real. Now you know Dylan Radigan, right? He told it. He told the truth about the banks on MSNBC. Now he has to do a news report from a lake. Now we go to Dylan Radigan, fresh out of fishing dock. <laughs> the real issue in America is the concentration of resources in an incredibly small number of hands, whether it's Google and Facebook. I think it's Walmart and what was it, IBM and, uh, and a, you know, Coa Aluminum. And every decade has its concentration and the hysteria about concentration and the hysteria about monopolies and the hysteria... I mean, anti-capitalists are going to be anti-capitalists, they're going to be anti-capitalists, and they're going to make it up as they go along. And the fact that they always are proven wrong means nothing to them. Zero, zilch, nada. Whether it's the two political parties in our political system, or whether it's what's happening with Amazon, a beautiful vision, an incredible an executive, an incredible executive, an incredible company. Why, why does he got to do I don't know. Uh, you know why he's got to do that? Because he's standing on Amazon Lake. That's now notice, the... the, 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 the Hatred, the envy, the nihilism. Why can't you at least recognize the beauty of Amazon? The benefits that most Americans, 50% of Americans have prime. That most Americans, 50% of households, 91 million Americans benefit from Amazon. 91 million Americans are better off because of Amazon. But you can't appreciate that. You can't say a word. At least this guy says something positive, but you can't because you're filled with hatred, envy, m you know, motivated by an ideology that's about nihilism, it's about returning to the cave, it's about returning to subsistence farming, it's about hatred of mankind because it's hatred of pro progress. This is why nobody should call you a progressive.
You're not a progressive if you hate progress. And you hate progress. And this is the thing the left hates. It's progress. This is the thing Tucker Carlson hates. It's progress. Innovation. Improving hu human life. We live in an age of envy. An age where people just want to knock success down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But a disastrous effect on our society as we're seeing the complete concentration of power and as a result... What power does Amazon have exactly? The destruction of the ability for a truly competitive capitalist... It, Amazon has 4% of retail sales in America. 4%. There's lack of competition? Environment. So while it is impressive to see, and I have con incredible respect for Jeff Bezos and what he has done, it is a total abdication of, of the authority of the antitrust commissions in this country to allow this level of consolidation of power to continue, and it's reflected not only in our politics, but as we saw with the Amazon deal, in our business. Well, unfortunately, that's going to change because the antitrust division is being empowered to go after Amazon, to go after big tech, empowered by a Republican president. And... Um, I think I think if he gets a second term, I think you're going to see, or if a Democrat wins, it doesn't matter, you're going to see big tech in big, big, big trouble. Big trouble from the antitrust people. So we're living in the Gilded Age. We're supposed to have a Teddy Roosevelt come along and break it up, Thank but God instead we, we get the first black president to come by and say, quit fucking bitching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, they think, they think Obama was too, was too mellow. All right. I mean, that's just a taste. Let's see. What Do big things. Now, fuck, accept the system. Shut the fuck up. That's what's happening right now. We're going to get to that later. Hey. All right. So that's Jimmy Dore disrespecting Amazon, hating on Amazon, because he's a hater. No facts. No evidence. Nothing. Just hatred. Destruction for the sake of destruction. And a hatred for the American people who actually like Amazon, who actually benefit from Amazon, who actually enjoy the fact that Amazon is so convenient. He might not want convenience. He doesn't have to shop on Amazon. He can walk everywhere. I don't think he should drive. But this is where we are today. Uh, 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 and again, I, I, I refer you, if you haven't seen my episode on Tucker Carlson, go see it, because Tucker Carlson is exactly the same, left and right, both want us to return to villages. The right calls it small towns. To have old line manufacturing jobs. Although ideally, we would connect with nature and go and farm because that brings out the manliness in men and it keeps the women at home to do their thing, which is what so many conservatives would like to see. When I go back to small towns, subsistence farming, death and destruction, the collapse of civilization, that's what they're arguing for. That's what they really are about. And that's who we're up against. And you will not find a critique of what they're saying, a critique of what they're doing. Anybody who will critique both Carlson and Dorr, except moi, which is another reason you should support the show. Anyway, um, I mean, it's just, nobody does it out there. It's so depressing. You'd think that the free market people, you'd think that the better conservatives, the better people on the right, the old free market kind of conservatives, would be speaking up, would be talking up against this nonsense. But they're all silent. They're all silent. They're all afraid. That's the environment that we've created in this country. You've got smug leftists and smug rightists, all condemning industry, condemning entrepreneurs, condemning success condemning capitalism. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair cynicism and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.
for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I do it again. Maybe you'll get some help today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbrookshow.com slash support or go to right side up on the Iran Brook Show and, uh, and, and make your one-time donation. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the money. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the money.